We'll be starting in just a few minutes. <laughs> Jess, could you take your glasses off and put them on? It's a special signal. <laughs> texting Tom, we're just making sure the simulcast is working out. But that was like the um, when Barbara Gordon turns into Batgirl, it was that kind of moment. All right, that's good. We're live. I didn't make you call us yet. Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to do one more test. I'm going to spotlight you because Tom's watching from. La 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 la. See, this is just a spotlight. All right. Okay. Tom is very happy. This is happening. Yay. <laughs> We're doing it. All right. Awesome. We'll start in just a couple minutes. <laughs> Tom just wants me to randomly spotlight people. <laughs> All right, we'll give we'll give latecomers just a, a minute grace period and then we'll jump right in. Michael, am I co-host to have superpowers? You do. Yeah, you should uh you should see that security, that security shield at the bottom. That should let you oh, know. Oh cool. That's cool. And I think I can share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm gonna go through that slideshow first and then I'll give you a proper introduction. 
I awesome. added uh, a John Williams score to it, you know. <laughs> That's cool. Tom, Tom wants everybody oh. to know that he sees everybody and he wants me to just he says, I see Ken and Mishka and Chris and Troy and Jennifer and Erla. <laughs> and now he's just telling me to spotlight everybody. So uh, <laughs> he sounds excited. He's very excited. He's in Seattle. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to share my screen. And we'll go through the slideshow. Well, welcome, everybody to We Believe in Comics Friday Night Workshops at the Sequential Artist Workshop. I'm your, I'm your guest host, Michael, volunteer at SAW. Um, as many of you know, SAW is a nonprofit with online courses. Uh, you can reach us at LearnSAWComics.org. If you've been coming to Friday Night Comics and you haven't joined uh, a SAW through the Mighty Network, do it. It's fun. It's great. It's not just classes. It's a community. Uh, we've got a bunch of classes coming up soon. Okay, I tried to do something fancy here. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, the hidden history of comics with Rob Klo. We've got the big six month graphic novel intensive, which I've taken a couple of times. That's coming up in uh, June, I believe. And then next Friday, we've got, um, I don't know, all the, the Brady Bunch tiles are blocking that, but we've got, it looks like opposites. Uh, and Giggles with November Garcia. And then we've got uh, ongoing groups, uh, Georgia Weber with Drawing Health, J.D. Lunt with Sustainable Diary Comics, Comics with Josh Baer. I just took uh, that class in January. It's amazing. And of course, Comics Flow and Publish for people who graduated, I think, the big, uh, the year long and the, uh, and the graphic novel intensive and the graphic memoir working group. Saw survives from tuitions and donations. If you donated today, thank you very much. Um, you can also support Saw at this PayPal address. Um, and you can also join us as a sustaining member. And here's what those donations do. They support free public events like today. They help fund professional development opportunities for emerging, established, and expert cartoonists. They help secure SAW's future, keep our library well stocked, cover the cost of workshop materials and resources, and much, much more. Become a SAW sustaining member. It's good. It's good for the soul. You'll feel good, I promise. Uh, and how do you want to help? It's a Popeye cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the workshop, please share your stuff on social media with hashtag Friday Night Comics at Comics Workshop. If you're on Instagram, follow those hashtags, and then you can see everybody uh, who posted their work. Please, no inappropriate speech or imagery, no trolling or hate speech or explicit language. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Keep it PG-13. I think that we have some children with us, or sometimes we do. Enjoy and have fun. And now, introducing Jess Rolison, whose most recent comic, Invisible Wounds, is available for purchase at Fantagraphics. Check it out. That's my little slideshow. I'm going to stop my share and hand it over to you, Jess. Hi. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. My cat has joined us. Um, this can only end in tears. She's going to get cranky for no reason in probably five to 10 minutes. <laughs> but um, shout out to, to those of you that are attending and also your animals. Thanks for being here. And um, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited that uh, Michael and I were able to get together while Tom's in Seattle and make merry at the friday night comics and uh i was talking to tom what would be a good topic it seems like we've covered it all by this point right a lot of y'all been what feels like to hundreds of these and um i was like well i do a lot of nonfiction. as uh michael mentioned i have a book that's out with um fanographics and um it's it was nice to finish something <laughs> 
And now I'm doing a short form comics uh, with my partner, who's an, a nurse in the ICU. And um, that's been a lot of fun, um, as much fun as you can have with kind of serious content. But I was talking with Tom, what could be like a, a self-contained, interesting exercise for Friday Night Comics related to the nonfiction stuff I do? And a lot of my work has been um, based on collecting interviews with different people and taking those interviews, um, transcribing them sometimes by myself, and then trying to distill you know, like a 12 page comic from maybe a really, really long transcript might be like 50,000 words, trying to get it down to like 1200 words. It's a, it's like fitting all of your clothes into a tiny suitcase. <laughs> so some of it's easy enough where you can, um, you know, sort of uh, go through the sock bin at the thrift store and you know what you're looking for, what color or certain interests you might have um it can it can be an easy way to approach it that way um so I think what I'll do is I made some notes uh, broadly I want to explain what we're doing and I'd be happy to tell you a little bit about myself without getting too uh wordy about it because I want to maximize our time together with explaining the strange prompt that may or may not work <laughs> but I hope it does and then um having lots of time to share would be really great so I hope you'll share on the call. And then also we have a hashtag. I think it's hashtag Friday Night Comics. Um, and also I wanted to tell you that Saw has a nonfiction anthology and they're taking um, uh, pitches via a Google form. So I'm going to share that at the end of the call. And maybe you'll have a, a, a rough pitch by the end of the call. That could be amazing. <laughs> um, so we're like sh shooting for... Um, ambitious things, but we're happy that you're here and drawing if you want to. And um, we'll see if uh, if we can make some stuff. That's the goal. So um, Jen, you have to run at eight, but uh, I'm going to hang out. Um, oh, yeah, so that everybody who wants to share can share. Oh, it's saying I've signed out. Oh, no, that's some other thing. OK, let's see. Yeah, I'm leaving right at eight. So um, if y'all continue sharing, I'm going to like gently fade away, but I'll, I'll say goodbye. Uh, um, but I, I should have time to see a lot of it. There are my cats adjusting. OK, so I'm going to um, share my screen. There is a question in the chat from Jen Spence. Did you do an invisible wound zine earlier? I did. I think it was originally 16 pages. In the graphic novel, it's 12 pages, and the graphic novel collects 12 interviews with 12 different veterans at 12 pages each. I had to pick a random number, and 12 seemed like the best one for all of those things. Um, and so, yeah, so it does exist as a little zine, and you can get both. So if you kind of Google Just Rule to Invisible Wounds, and you're like, oh, this is it, and it's so affordable, <laughs> it's uh, the full-length feature film is a little pricier, but um, you get more pages for your dollar, I suppose. So the link that I included and the link that Michael mentioned in the slideshow is uh, the publisher link for the um, for the book. Um, but both are good. Uh, OK, so let's check this out. Uh, this Some of these things are notes to myself. For example, turn the Zoom captions on. <laughs> so we've done that. Thank you, Michael. And then uh, I just wanted to say I teach comics at SAW. Uh, lately, I've been doing comics and drawing and also writing for comics. And um, in some of these classes we did in the fall and this semester, we're thinking about how do we fit all these words onto the page? And some of you might be more interested in doing silent comics or abstract comics. So words are not required, but if, if you're perhaps dealing with a literal and you've got lots of gorgeous words that you would love to preserve, um, this can be a fun exercise to try to figure that out. So in addition to teaching at SAW, I've also taught at Boston University, Leslie University and the School of Visual Arts. And then my graphic novel is out from Banner Graphics Books and is also available as a zine if you love zines. And uh, again, like I said, I'm working with my partner. I'm making comics about critical care nursing in the ICU. And I'll try to share some slides of some of that work. Um, and then also I'll share this in the chat. I did a three panel comics for Friday Night Comics a year or two ago. Um, and you might like that, that's free and available for y'all to check out. Um, and then there's also 
I, there's random classes that come up, but there's also, um, if you like gouache, there's a gouache class uh, that's self-guided and just has recordings of me. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you are even looking for a class, but I just wanted to provide those links. You got the link from the book already. And then here very quickly, which we can actually maybe I'll reshare my screen and show you that nursing comic. Let me, um, there are a few actually, but that's a good example. And let's see if I can find this one. In lieu of a slideshow, I love the internet. <laughs> Since we're on Zoom, I'll just show you. So um, let's see, I'll show you the, the one from the nib first. I'm in the wrong place. Um, on the topic of gouache, right? I also, this is a digital, this is the link that I just threw in the chat. The nib is a really great place. They accept pitches for nonfiction comics. So that's another place. If you're interested in sharing your work outside of social media or want to get published, they're pretty friendly and they have um, information on pitching to them. So if you've never pitched before, they have like a pretty good um, parameters on their website. But I worked with them a few times um, with the veteran comics. And then also these are um, comics that essentially my partner wrote and I'm drawing. And if you ever been in a long-term relationship, <laughs> You, have, you might have differing opinions with the people that you love. So it can be quite interesting to collaborate. And uh, the other thing is, I, I like his writing. I think he writes very beautifully. So it's hard for me to say, we don't have enough room for this. It's a nine point font. I can only do so much here. Uh, but we ended up having like a decent amount of room. This also appeared in print. It was very short. So um, it appeared in print here in the work issue, but also um, it was just a two page comic six panels per page, 12 panels. Um, so knowing what your parameters are going in is really helpful. So what we're gonna try to do is take original source material or uh, research, right? Anything we find, but particularly um, something from an interview and adapt that to the comics page. I recommend a single page comic, but you could try for two if you want, depending on how much time you have and, um, and try to limit it to about a hundred words per page. It sounds really arbitrary, but I noticed when I was working on the graphic novel, I was like, how many words fit in here anyway? Like it would be nice to know. And I had a few chapters already. So I just literally started counting and then averaged it. 100 is on the higher end. I, it depends on how big your lettering is too, but um, it seemed like a safe number and easy to remember. And it's arbitrary, but um, it can be helpful if you're editing your script or taking source material in something that has a word count tool. You can copy paste it uh, on a web browser word count tool or use Microsoft Word or something like that. But these are little tiny gouache paintings I made and then I assembled um, like some digital lettering with. And um, this was all sort of random stuff, not particularly written formally. It was it was me kind of piecing it together like collage or something. So if you, if you have, um, bits of things that are thematically linked. Um, a listicle, those are really popular. You can kind of craft something like that. And these are just images like I had on my phone too. So they don't have to be like hard corollaries, but they can kind of be freewheeling. I wanted to show you both of those because they were kind of related. So I'm gonna stop share and share again. I'll go back to my magical guide to what we're doing. So here we are in the word doc again. So this is what we're gonna to try to do. Are you curious about adapting nonfiction into comics? We're going to look at the interview as a source of inspiration. We're making comics. Uh, we wanna make comics journalism kind of on a micro scale and experiment in a brief space. So you're not looking for cohesion, like the whole entire story in a tiny little space. I feel like that would be quite a challenge and might not be what you're looking for, but you're just isolating a moment and really picking up what's interesting to you. So again, like I was saying, 100 words or less for a comics page is probably good. My sweet spot is around 75 words, around six panels. That seems good. If you do more than nine panels a page, it might get a little crowded, but I've seen people have success with it. And if you're an old timer and you've done this before, you might know what your preferences are. You might even have a template. Um, so my note to you is to make beautiful lettering so you can read it and derpy drawing, nothing too fancy unless you want it to be fancy 
Um, sometimes I'll pick one moment per page to be fancy with, and then I'll leave it alone. Um, if you have a template for uh, panels, you can use that. If you have um, a post-it note, I happen to have one right here. It's filled with a to-do list, but you could take six post-it notes, and then you have a six-panel comic. <laughs> You could do things like that if you want to, if it makes your life easier. If it doesn't, you can move on. So what is what is this what we're doing? We're adapting an interview to the comics page. And one that I really like, you don't have to use. I, what I did was I picked particular interviews that I thought are pretty short and, or also a nonfiction piece that was very short. Um, if you want to just use those, if you don't want to think too hard. Um, the, there's uh, This is an interview by Terry Gross from Fresh Air on NPR with Emil Ferris, who's a great uh, graphic novelist, and um, her story is really fascinating. There's also a writer I like talking about an artist I like, Hanif Abdurraki, writing about Prince performing at the Super Bowl, and I thought it was a really delightful piece. That's not an interview, but it's really self-contained short nonfiction, so I thought that would be good practice. Um, and then this is a longer interview. This is where we're at with Patty Smith at Harper's. And it would be hard to adapt the whole thing, but you could kind of skim it and find a section that you like. So the first step in this exercise, it's a little involved. First step is find source material, save it locally, or you can print it out. Um, whatever works for you. Um, if you're not sure how, well, what do I find? Like, how, how do I figure out what I want to write about or make a comic about? These are actual Google searches that Tom Hart and I did <laughs> topic plus interview transcript search terms. So you can be, um, we looked for raising chickens plus interview transcript. And we accidentally pulled up, um, as like a screen play for a episode of I love Lucy. <laughs> And I was like, this is the real stuff because the dialogue was quite good. So just check out just your, your mileage may vary, I guess. You can also type in search terms of interview and publication you remember liking. Like, didn't Elvis get interviewed by such and such? So you type those parameters plus the word transcript, and I'll probably have the written word version of an audio recording. You could do, I just use this earlier tonight trying to see if I, it would work. Best interview archive famous transcript, random word salad. I came up with a lot of really interesting things. Um, these are some great sources. I can throw these, I'll throw these links in the chat too. The Harper's Bazaar interview archive, I thought was pretty good. It doesn't have a paywall. Um, so I'm gonna put the links a little out of order. Um, and then there's the paywall free section of Paris Review called Redux. It's sort of like their newsletter. So you could poke around there. If this is taking a long time and you're in a panic, try to remember the last thing you read that was actually interesting and not depressing and try to find that again. Most, most news is um, very abbreviated. So any anything could kind of work, even if it's not an interview. Like, what did you like about it? So those are those links. And I'll, I'll scroll up to here's, I'll just copy paste this whole thing. And I'll also um, copy paste some of the instruction too, because I'm gonna um, try to try to do a live drawing <laughs> to the best of my ability. <laughs> uh, but I want to explain the rest of the parameters so you can kind of get cooking while I'm rambling in the background. So another decision paralysis cure is to pick one of these links at random, some type of source, something you read that was good. Circle a random section. Close your eyes and point to a random section and circle it. And that's what you're working with. It All of it works. So once you have that, that's sort of the hardest part. From your source, highlight what you think is good. So you can do this digitally or you can do it with a printout. Um, you can also make notes if you're like, I don't really have a printer. I can't really hide. I have it on my screen or on my phone. And you can just copy parts of it that you thought were good. And you can paraphrase if you want to. It doesn't have to be verbatim. Um, let's see. So this is an adaptation. So you can leave things out or isolate a small moment. And from that, you should have a rough script. It's particularly useful if you can nail down and ahead, sort of ahead of time, decide how many panels do you want to do and how long do you think it should be a page or two pages? And I think make, making an arbitrary choice about your parameters is better than reading the thing and trying to engineer it. Like, oh, it should probably be longer or shorter. Sometimes just having a random number is good. Um, and I'll show you some slides of, of how I was working on the graphic novel and other short form comics. 
and um, and see how that goes. Step three is draw your comic. Clear lettering and bad drawing is the way to go. Make it fancy later and then share it with hashtags. So that's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's see if I can <laughs> copy this. Where, where even is step one? Okay, so I put the specs. I guess I'll, let's see what I can do here. So this is gonna be a big, um, uh, and I have anonymous asker. Why not depressing for an interview? You can totally go there. I just think uh, I know a lot of people that are struggling emotionally right now. So I was like, let's. I don't know. I uh, I stopped reading the news. So I was like, oh, my prompt has the news in it. I don't. Uh, I don't know if that would be helpful. Um, sorry, this is like a wall of text. Uh, how long should the interviews be? I think like a paragraph or two is probably good to excerpt. Right? But you're not going to do the whole thing. The whole thing would be too wild. Let me show you how I, and let me, I'm just checking the chat really, really quickly to see if I missed anybody else. Okay. And feel free to ask more questions in the chat and I will, um, yeah, author interviews can avoid triggers, right? Um, I think also if you, if you have, I mean, I don't have a very good memory at all, but if you remember reading something once that you enjoyed that kind of fit the parameters, you can attempt to look for it. Google is sort of magnificent and in, in unearthing things. But go, but go look for things that you remember first. <laughs> and even if that thing is from today. <laughs> but just having a source text. Um if uh let me see if I can pull up uh I had some slides, just a few that have some of my um where are they um kind of like transcripts, I guess I can show you. Oh, my cat wants to get out of the bedroom now. I told you. Um, here we go. Just want to make sure I have the right thing going. All right. I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to let my cat out. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to show you this is a transcript in a Word document directly from the graphic novel. Um, so there's one of the veterans. Her name's Nicole and my name is Jess. And we're just going back and forth. We're talking about my cat. <laughs> Not this cat, it was my other cat. That's not going to be in the final graphic novel. So I knew that wasn't going to be in there. I knew that I wasn't going to be in there as a character. So I was only looking for things that Nicole was saying. And then I was like, well, we don't want to make the comic about my cat. But I copied and pasted into a new document all the things I thought were interesting. And it was way too long. It was like 70 pages. And I think a comic script is like two pages of Word doc. Um, you know, each each word document page is like 250 words, if I had to guess. So really not a lot of room. But this is what I ended up with. These drawings are probably a little fancier than you would want, but I just tried to make the the words legible and the drawings somewhat clear. This is like a little bit fancier than um than stick figures, but it's still also pretty basic. Um figuring out like what's a caption box and what is what is an, um, you know, dialogue balloon. And then also this is an interview with a person and it's sort of meta and that she's talking about a conversation. she said, my parents said, you can do whatever you want to do. But I decided to draw her parents saying that actual thing versus the whole thing being in caption boxes. But you can keep everything in caption boxes and kind of illustrate it. And that's a great way to work. This is the final page. There was a step in between this. I promise it didn't magically <laughs> turn into final art overnight. It did uh, it's actually a couple steps, but this is very simple. Remember, like a silhouette. If you don't know how to draw something, I love doing that. This is like way too tall and this person's too small. It's fine. This was a beautiful drawing and it got more complicated. Like it doesn't have to be super fancy. This is a example of trying to figure out the the script and the images at the same time digitally, that can be a great way to work. If you copy paste into Procreate or something, my cat is so sad. She wants to get out of here. Um, and then I sent this to the art director and I said, we, can you cut this section of the script out? And I already started drawing, but I got to pretty much keep a lot of the images. This is what the final thing came out like, but I wanted to show you a lot. This is a lot of words for page. This ends up, this is a font based in my handwriting, but it ends up being kind of cluttered. Uh, and then you guys just saw this, right? A lot um, cleaner with less words, but even then it's still kind of crowded. And there's nothing wrong with having a lot of words, that's okay. But the the sort of trick is trying to figure out what's the least amount you um, can fit into your suitcase, your, 
your carry on luggage <laughs> for the comic, right? Um, so what I would say, I'm going to release my cat into the wild of the living room and then I'll see if I can start a comic and I'll, I'll show you what I'm working with trying to figure out. Um, and I didn't pre-select anything. I wanted it to be a level playing field, even though I know what we're doing. I still haven't figured out what I want to draw. It's, uh, and I'm keeping an eye on the time. We want to draw for at least 20 minutes if you haven't started. So I would limit your research to like five minutes, set a timer, just find something. You might have, um, if you like attract paper, you might have a big pile of news clippings right next to you or a delightful little section of something. Um, if you have a nonfiction book, Tom also tried this. You can go to your bookshelf, pull down a favorite nonfiction book and open it to a random page and try to try to isolate a section into a one page comic. I'll be right back. All right. You want to go out? Oh. We'll probably do that a few more times. Cat goes out, cat goes in. It's like, I, I've had enough of your shenanigans. Um, yeah, Neil Gaiman's uh, Tumblr is really great. You could also um, take multiple things, like a, a celebrity twi uh, Twitter account is a great idea because in theory, it's a lot of isolated quotes. And sometimes there's a thread where there's a dialogue. Um, you could do like, <laughs> there are different pages devoted to like Tinder nightmares. And then there's like a text exchange that could be illustrated. It's not quite an interview, but I think um, the back and forth really shows like which character is speaking. It's usually two people. Um, let me make sure I gave you all the, enough links to, so those first couple of links in that big wall of text, there's the ML Ferris link. We can, maybe I'll show you all some of these while you're working, if you haven't already clicked on them. Um, oh, wait, let me see. Uh, 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 uh. Just wanted to show you some of these to get a sense of, someone was, someone was asking, well, how long should the interview be? And I, I'll show you some of the examples I have just pulled. If you, if you want to use the examples, you can, but I can tell you my reasoning for why I chose them as potential candidates. Um, let me see if I share my screen. So we're back on the internet. So that first one with is Emil Ferris. This is her artwork here. This is NPR.org. It's an article from 2017. It's um, a Terry Gross interview on, I think, Fresh Air. Beautiful photo of Emil herself. So it does that nonfiction thing where it's like, here's a recap of what the heck we're talking about. Then we immediately jump into a quote. And then we have more info about her and her life. And then interview highlights. So what's really great about some of these resources like NPR or Harper's Bazaar or a place that uh, is a magazine is they pay someone to transcribe the audio interviews. So you have the words right on the page already. And they're usually picking the things that are kind of great already. So that takes some of the pain of editing off of your shoulders, right? Um, and then we've got some more of our work. Um, so just kind of, approximating about how long this is. It's probably 1,500 words if I had to take a wild guess, maybe a little less. You're not going to write all of that, but it's it's quite short, but the actual audio recording is 42 minutes. So there's, there's more than just this uh, abbreviated transcript. Also looking at Hanif Abdurraqib, who I love. Um, this is a very brief piece he wrote that ended up coming out in um, a collection of his nonfiction, I believe. And it starts with a beautiful first sentence. And of course, there was rain as if summoned by the man himself. And we know this article is about Prince. The night Prince walked on water, the majestic flood that began its Super Bowl in 2007 and never stopped. So I know I want to draw Prince if I did this. And we know that Prince is the star of the show based on the headline. So I could probably put him in the comic early on. It doesn't have to be this big reveal. But I could highlight what parts of the language I think are great. So that's one, two, three paragraphs, four big paragraphs, five. That's it. This is probably a thousand words, if I had to guess. I feel like I'm at one of those um, 
circus games where you guess how many jelly beans are in the jar. Uh, but you can always highlight and do a word count tool. So if I was randomly pointing at it, maybe I just, okay. It's, um, I don't know, maybe so, this is a pretty big chunk. So like maybe somewhere in here, oh, a, a sheep blowing up from the front of the stage until Prince is only a silhouette. I'm familiar with the recording he's referencing, so I don't have to do the extra research of looking for a video of his performance. I've watched it several times, <laughs> so I might already have the visuals in my mind, even if they're not, um, you know, permanent. I can draw stick figure prints, no problem. So here's another example, Patti Smith for Harper's Bazaar. This is much longer than you could probably work with, but what's nice is um, when, when interviews get digitized, um, the way that they're formatted on websites, they're narrow rows, and then it's a few sentences per little tiny piece. Also, Patty's looking fabulous wearing some designer menswear, so that would just be fun to draw. You could draw a single image of Patty Smith and then find things that you loved from this interview and just write it around it. Voila, you have a comic page ready to go. Um, so you could you could scroll like a mad person, a wild woman, and then say, oh, what about this paragraph? Uh, St. Mark's Church, 1971, so now we have a place and a year. And it's a rock show. And who was there? This guy, Lenny K. I don't know who that looks like. Maybe I would look it up. Maybe I'd just draw a stick figure and write Lenny on his t-shirt. And then where do we end? Uh, she's writing a book and she talks about her relationship with Robert Mablethorpe. So some of this stuff, if you can pick a subject or a celebrity you're already familiar with, it can be rewarding because I happen to know where St. Char Mark's Church is and who Robert Mablethorpe is. If I was just doing this at random, this might not be a good pick for you if you don't know anything about Patti Smith. It might be harder to figure something out. But let's say you're coming to something brand new and you don't know. Uh, she's a visual artist and she writes bits of poems and she makes drawings. So without looking up her drawings or her poems, I could draw a picture of her because I have a photo of her right here and I could just draw her in a studio, what I envision her studio to be. So you can invent and make things up. I think there's a pressure when you're working with nonfiction that you have to research every little detail. You do not have to do that. You could also do that later in a like later draft, you know, where you're like, well, she should be sitting at an easel with uh, an artist's cap and a smock because that sounds fun for me to draw. We could draw her like that and we would understand you're having some fun, right? So those are examples for when someone's asking, how long should it be? This is a quite a long interview, not the longest ever. Oh, there's like a little video of Patty looking really charming. I think she laughs or smiles. Oh, look how cute. Um, but it's pretty, I don't know if I had to guess 10,000 words, maybe less. I'm really guessing. <laughs> 8,000, 5,000? I'm not sure. Um, so I wouldn't go any longer than that. If you can find a topic or a publication that's familiar to you, that'd be what I would do. Um, maybe I can attempt, I was sort of trying to do it with the Prince piece, but I think it might be interesting to see if I can dig out a piece from the Patti Smith. Um, let's go to the chat and see if I missed anything. What is step two after finding the source material? That's a great question. Uh, let's see. So step two, it's buried in here. Uh, from your source, once you figure out what the source is, highlight what you think is good and write notes in the margins if you printed it out. There's step two. Um, and KT is saying, and if anyone wants to know the number of words, like a, a word count, I use wordcounter.net and there are other similar sites. Absolutely. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule, but if you're like, where do I start? Or I just need a random number. There's your random number. <laughs> But you could also um, find something you like, copy bits of it down. It could even be free form where you start the drawing first and then write little bits if you want to do that first. I tend to isolate the words, be as minimalistic as possible, and write the words on the paper first in the panels and then draw the thing last. Um, to, you know, your mileage may vary. There's not really a wrong way to do it. Um, while y'all are drawing, would it be helpful if I kind of doodled, <laughs> uh, live doodled, see how yeah. it goes. So I'm going to see if I can isolate a section from the Patty Smith. I'll paste it in the chat so you know what I'm looking at. And you can remind me if I forget. And then I'm going to try to do a one-pager, six-panel comic while y'all are working. 
Uh, Reha is asking, how many pages would you recommend? Do it all away. Okay, thanks. Y'all are so great. Um, I would say, see if you can do one page. It would be crazy. You, again, there's this desire to take the whole thing and fit it into a small space. If anyone's ever seen the 70s animation from Disney, The Sword in the Stone, there's a beautiful character, Merlin, who he, he waves his wand and he packs his whole house and everything goes into a tiny little bag, sort of like Mary Poppins. You don't have to do that unless you have superpowers. Totally do that if you want to. But there are opportunities if you isolate words and you're brief, you know, you put it in there and then you see what happens. Um, you might be able to fit things, you know, I don't know, like in that interview, they're always talking about, we're at this hotel and we're eating this type of salad. Um, because those are what the words say. If I draw that, then the words in the comic can say something else like, Patty Smith was making drawings in 1974 at St. Mark's Church. That's an example of my horrible memory. You can draw something that's not exactly corollary to, to the words itself. They're doing two different things, which is really delightful. So let me fire up my Photoshop. My computer will get very cranky. I'm going to see if I can find um, a template. I had one from a student very graciously gave me a six panel template. I'm going to see if I saved it in the right place. If not, I'm just going to wing it, which is my favorite, favorite dance move. Um, if you're working on very tiny paper, you might have trouble fitting your words. So the smallest I work is I'll take, if you're working on paper and you're using pencil or something similar, I'll take a piece of printer paper. It's eight and a half by 11 and fold it in half the long ways. So end up with a small vertical. That's the smallest I'll work. It's a little bit bigger than this. I'm trying to see if I have a piece of paper hanging out somewhere. So if I had a piece of paper like this, you could draw this big if you want. It got plenty of room if you have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But if you like something a little more petite because it just feels more manageable, you just fold it in half this way. That's usually really good too. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, six little panels. That can be possible. Let me see if we can find this. Uh, ye old template. Mm -hmm. I might just draw one. So you can be invited to draw wonky squares <laughs> if you want. Want. Let's see. I thought I had one. Um, let's see. Let's see, I'll just make a new one. So if I make a new one. And then maybe, I'm not on social media, but I'll share this on the Saw Mighty Network and the General Network, and we can get the party started over there if you want to share. And we'll also have time to share on the call. We'll probably start sharing in a few minutes. <laughs> hey, usually around 7.45. Yeah, so that's only in like six minutes. <laughs> uh, we could do it. It'll totally work. It'll be fine. I just mm -hmm. need like 90 minutes to finish this. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's quite it's quite a lot, but I do think it, the hard part is just making a decision. So sometimes that's what's nice about parameters is you just you just do it and then you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. Oh, I don't have my thing. Let me um I'll be right back. I got to grab my stylus. Okay, so we're sharing at 7.45. I have six minutes. <laughs> it'll go great. It'll be fine. So the first thing is I got to find my patty spat. Um, I am picking the last paragraph because I, so spoilers, sorry. <laughs> but there's the last paragraph. Let me go to the Zoom. Oh, I am in the Zoom. So um, here's... Jess's paragraph. I feel like this is the right amount of words. And you don't have to use all of it. It's quite a lot. It's the last paragraph. Toward the end of my time in Paris, I wake too early. This is the journalist herself, as far as I know. I sit down to write this profile, but struggle. This is kind of meta. 
The words I type on the screen swim in front of me until I delete them. I write, delete, write, delete. The sun eventually rises, casting its golden hue. I check my email and there's a message from Smith that ends with, I am going to get coffee and go through the excruciating void and hopefully write something of worth. I spent a few hours attempting and failing to write. I start to feel stressed and even a bit of despair over my lack of productivity. And then I remember Smith's advice. If it's inside, it's very still, just animate it. And animating it, you can grab a hold of some of these glimpses and make them flesh, make them work. My phone beeps. Smith has sent me a picture of a notebook. It's pages brimming with her handwriting. Her text to me reads, I wrote XX. Then later she texts again, still at it. So this is about the creative process, which I can relate to. My favorite part of this, like if I was trying to repeat this to my husband, <laughs> like a joke I heard that was funny. Um, I'm going to get a coffee and go through the excruciating void and hopefully write something of worth. I know I want that to be in my comic. and I'll build everything else out from that. So let me see if I can copy that and I'll share my screen. And I don't, believe it or not, I don't really work digitally. <laughs> this is all a hoax. But if you start with your words, however that works, I hope my font is in here. I don't even know what font this is. Beautiful. Okay, so. Um, there's a lot of tinkering here, but I bet I, I got four minutes left. I can definitely do this. This is no problem at all. It's a little small if I, I have like little, little eyeballs. I'm going to make the font a little bigger. I like that. Okay, let's see. And I'm kind of figuring out where I could chop it up. Um, text formatting is also crazy. I mean, uh, like how many words per line would work. I don't know. Uh, digitally, I can tinker with it in a different way. I like that. And it's in quotes, so I know Patty said it. So that's good. This is a very abbreviated experiment. Let's see if I, oh, perfect. Okay. So this is also from memory too, but oh yeah. You got your text first. Patty is like really cool. I like the idea of her walking down the street. <laughs> I feel like she has really good eyebrows. She doesn't look that mean in real life. Maybe I'll give her some flowers. She was holding flowers in the interview. Um, and she was wearing a lot of black in that interview, I noticed. And long shirts. Oh, I'm running out of room. But she's walking. Hmm. Maybe I have her. Now, she could be like going. I'm picturing her walking down the street with a coffee, but she she could be like walking to her kitchen, I don't know. And I have her hands in her pockets because who has time for hands? Um, there could be, now I'm starting to think just having this drawing, she's got really great hair. Maybe I would make it even more cool and I could move her around or something. I think I would want to make her a little bit bigger. Now this is a single image, right? If you're trying to do a six, panel comic, you would probably want to have six beats, right? Uh oh, what did I do? So make her, <laughs> she's really tiny. But you also, if you're like allergic to panels, this is fine. You can work like this where you're like, okay, there's one thing. And then I have to draw like a few other things so it can feel more like a sticker page. So maybe I just have her, it can be like a way to think about it. I just have her working at her desk. So there's another drawing. And uh, what else? And then you can also, if you're like, I haven't figured out what words I want to have. Maybe there's a window behind her. And then I put some words here. So you can even sketch where you think the words might go if you haven't figured out. She never looks very happy when I draw her. Uh, okay. Uh, what else is she doing? Um, coffee. They mentioned coffee, right? So if you're only working with a little bit, 
oh, maybe there's a close-up of her coffee. Maybe the steam from the coffee is a comics panel. Maybe there are words on the coffee mug. Like you could put a panel there if you want. Maybe the steam is, oh, sorry, is also like a lightning cloud. <laughs> Why not invite all the ideas in that? Oh, this looks great. I love it. Ooh, curtains. If you like to draw curtains, they could, they could be fluttering very dramatically. Like maybe the windows open. <laughs> maybe there's a judgmental pigeon. I love that. Um, and then I don't know. Maybe there are pigeons following her around. Now it's become part of the story. They're all like, "What's Patty up to? You didn't write today." Now they're like. A character, right? So obviously this is nonfiction. And this is only about two panels. Your comic will be much cooler than mine. If you like something <laughs> regimented, you should always draw your panels first so you don't misbehave. But if you do get into trouble, you can always resize things. But a lot of it's just about isolating what the words might be. What What's the most exciting? This is clearly the most exciting part of that. Um, I'm stalling for time for you <laughs> since 746. Uh, but what, yeah, what, what would be exciting to write or draw? Uh, and I like the determination of that voice. I am going to get a coffee and go through the excruciating void and hopefully write something of worth. So there's three things. Well, four things. I is Patty, coffee, excruciating void. How would I draw an excruciating void? Maybe that's what the thunderbolts are. And then writing something of worth also. Maybe there's just these floating blank pages that become panels. Maybe it's one big messy page, right? So you could put stuff here. You could also have pictures. Like maybe there's there's Patty again. I don't know where she's going. Maybe she's like coffee place, a latte. And maybe it's she's in France, so she's like mm, latte, merci, beaucoup. I'm trying to give her lots of hair, right? So you're, again, your comic would be way cooler than me, but trying to figure out the words and then pictures or vice versa. Um, in terms of editing, if you want a little more feedback on that, I kind of left it out. Isolate the who, what, where, when, right? Who is this about? Where are they? What objects are, are available either in the story that they're telling or in the real moment of the piece that's being written? Um, and you can use those things to your advantage uh, in a more symbolic way. Like, obviously, there wasn't a real thunderstorm coming out of Patty Smith's coffee mug, but spiritually, there might have been because she was experiencing writer's block and might have drank an excessive amount of coffee, for example. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Can anyone relate to that? And then uh, Darlene says, it was entertaining listening to your comments as you drew your comic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, There's nothing like the thrill of um, trying to do a demo by the seat of your pants. Um, no one has time for hands. Jen is also saying, I'm finding myself really tired and I think I'm going to curl up and go to bed early. <laughs> I agree. So that's, that's a vibe. Zach is saying, when you're interviewing someone, how do you prepare questions? I actually didn't, which is probably why my book took so long, but I just said, <laughs> well, I did have a broad question. If you're ever working on nonfiction or even fiction, if you have one question you can write towards, um, and hold on to that. It's usually something you're most curious about. Why, why is this a comic or why are you making this thing? And my big question for veterans was, well, what did you do when you got home? Like, what was helpful? Like, how did you reintegrate into civilian life? My other question was, what's something about being a veteran that most civilians don't know anything about? And they could usually riff on that for like hours of tape. And then it was just me like just having a conversation with another person. And then later I could kind of sift through. And that was sort of the joy of it. It was hard to transcribe the interviews. I ended up sending that out to have some like a professional transcription service, but it can be really nice to listen to a conversation twice. You'll also notice how much you interrupt people. <laughs> if you record yourself asking people questions. I'm insufferable with interrupting very bad. So Jess, this was uh, an epic uh, uh, undertaking. I don't expect you know people to have gotten so far or, or finished it. I got like a few panels because there were a lot of steps. But if yeah. anybody wants to share where they are in this, yeah, um, yeah, we love process. Yeah, yeah, that would be wonderful. Just Anything hit the uh, hit your reactions and raise your hand. Come on, it doesn't matter. It looks, if it's like, not it looks like this. If you click reactions. You can okay, I see some great people. Cool. Yeah. 
So Michael's going to be our um, our MC with the sharing, and then I'll I'll chime in. I'm just going to operate the uh, the buttons. Yeah, he's, I'm going to let he's you the man behind the curtain. <laughs> right, we've got Ina. Uh, let me uh, uh, spotlight you. There we go. Oh my goodness! Holy crap! <laughs> Oh, and, and uh, yeah, so I can't, oh my God, look at this beautiful drawing. Oh, is that me? I was like, oh, celebrity sighting. And the cat, yes, yes, yes. So this is like uh, a slice of life, what's really happening on the ground right now. This is beautiful. Wow. Can you, can you read what uh, the text for us? I can't, but uh, Ina, would you unmute yourself? Oh, oh. I should have told you that earlier. <laughs> I was being nosy. <laughs> Okay, it's me. I have to press something. Oh, it's funny. You know how I'm singing? So yeah, it's the same quote as Jess pulled because it's a good one. And I just, I didn't do any drawing. Uh, I mean, except for the portrait of Jess. I just used uh, watercolor. And so my void is supposed to be like tree branches and stuff. And then the last panel, I'll do the coffee and maybe a, like a book that she's writing in. And that's it. Wow. So that's where I am. But I like the portrait of Jess. And the cat. It's <laughs> just like fun. us. I do too. <laughs> that's my thing, doing Jess. All right, that's me. Take me off the spotlight, please. Sure. Thank you, Thank Rena. You. How yeah. about Mitty? Mitty, are you ready? Oh, no, wait. Uh, now all the, the order changed. So I see Luna. Oh, and, and then I got to do the thing, ask to unmute. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Sorry, this is my first time sharing. And of course, it's the day that I'm kind of thick. But really, I kind of took the prompt and went with it. But I took a quote from an interview between Jenny O'Dell and Miranda July from the middle of the pandemic that I think about a lot. And I oh, can just nice. read that. And so the scenes that I drew were really just me, oh God, <laughs> interacting with the pandemic. Uh, struggling, but that's okay. you're doing great. I can't read backwards either. When I share, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I think my lighting's bad, but yeah, you're doing great. Uh, it's the quote is just, you just have these moments where it hits you so hard, and I know we aren't articulate or brilliant about it yet because we can't be. We're in it. It'd be like describing surgery while you're having surgery. It's almost like per perverse to try. It's not what you're supposed to do, but still, I do it anyway. I will try relentlessly because that is my job. It's almost like you're falling, like we're all falling, and we're trying to describe what falling feels like as we fall. So thank you. Great session. That's awesome. Thanks so much. I see Mitty. Uh, bear with me on this. You know what? Uh, hang on. OK, you can unmute. Okay, I'm unmuted. So that was really interesting. And I got, um, mostly I was listening to you, so I, I couldn't draw, but I just at the very end, I did um, your quote of um, Patti Smith writing through the void. <laughs> wow. Uh, I love it. Wow, I'm so impressed. Y'all got so much drawing done. I'm like, yeah, when you have like two seconds to draw something, you're like, ah, and it's so marvelous. Yeah, but sometimes that's great. But really, I just, I I, I got a lot of ideas for the future. And so that's what I really appreciate. Good. Like you broke oh. it down in a way that's really helpful. So. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Maybe. Thank you. I love the energy in those lines. Hey, Maria. Hi. Hi. Hi there. I am. Um, I'm reading this book, which is uh, Sea People, uh, the Puzzle of Polynesia. And uh, I did what Jess said, just pick a random page that I that I had read, though. So it was in the, I've only read about 60 pages of the book. So I just picked it and I just started. Right. I write, wrote it out and made up little pictures wow. to go with it. And basically, um, okay, well, it's basically talking about how um, this gentleman or this uh, Spaniard discovered, quote unquote, the Marquesas Islands. And then she's talking about how 
you can't really discover something where people already live. And then later on, she talks about how um, uh, the king of France, the, the, the islands were given to the, um, the king of France, King Louis XIV, I think, of France. So I just thought, oh, this is a good way to come up with how to talk about what I'm interested in talking about. So thank you. It was very helpful. Good. I'm glad Maria. That's good. Maria's not afraid of anything. So we're happy she's here boldly showing us how it's done. Mo, you got really far. Thank you for sharing that. How about uh, one clue? I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. On your muted. On mute. On mute. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Can I, is it possible for me to share my screen? I do my comic digitally and it's easier if I can share that. Uh, um, all right. Try it. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Yeah. So I looked at the links that you sent, and I actually spent too long looking for them because I thought we were going to have more time drawing. So I, this is super rushed, but uh, I found uh, I found an interview with Maurice Sendak that was uh, that I thought had some interesting parts. So I went with that about talking about books. In the full context, he's talking about like why he doesn't like ebooks, but I, I left out <laughs> that intro. He said, uh, "Yeah, a book is really like a lover. It arranges itself in your life in a way that is beautiful." Even as a kid, my sister, the eldest, brought books home home for me, and I think I spent more time sniffing them and touching them than reading. I just remember the joy of the book, the beauty of the binding, the smelling of the interior. Beautiful. I don't know. I, I kind of feel that way about books, too. I like the physical books. I'm actually not a fan of even either, so I kind of liked his sentiment and wasn't really sure what to draw. That, that lower left panel is the one I'm least happy with. I kind of tried to draw it in his art style, but totally failed. Uh, anyway. We're, we're not seeing your screen, by the way. Oh, you're not? Oh, heck. No. I'm sorry. Uh, did I not? Uh-oh. Go. It was oh, good. It was like an exciting intro. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were seeing my screen all that time. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, like I said, the lower left panel, I don't think I really captured his art style. I was trying to kind of copy his art style, and I, I did not. <laughs> if I had more time, maybe, or more reference. But, cool. uh, but yeah, that was... The Marie Sendak book. Uh, Look at the uh, the panel gutters are books too. That's so inventive. That's you know, I, I like playing around with panels and panel borders sometimes. So I think it really looks like him in that first panel too. <laughs> he's like oh, nice. he's always a little like grumpy and cute, and but I like he's like poetic here. It's lovely. Thank you. Right. So I can't believe I'll drew this much. <laughs> sure no. Okay. Amazing. Okay. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. How about Kathy? Let's see. Okay. Hey, hello. Hello. This was interesting. I immediately, when you started talking, I had an uh, interview in mind. Leonard Cohen is yeah. a favorite. Mm -hmm. and I, so I did. Um, and I wasn't sure, you know, you said something about post-it notes. I'm not sure. I, I ended up using the post-it oh. note for the picture and then the then put the writing. So I, don't oh, know. I love that. Look at that. Put it together. But anyway, anyway, so I did that. But anyway, it was about... Um, his dear friend Marianne died right before him. And it was her, he was writing her like a letter as she was dying. And it was just so beautiful. Well, Marianne, I think I will follow you. I'm so close behind you that if you stretched out your hand, I think you can reach me. Oh, that's awesome. I just want to wish you a very good journey. It was just a beautiful. Oh. And um, then um. This is another, as I approach the end of my life, I have even less and less interest in examining what have got to be very superficial evaluations and opinions about the significance of one's life or one's work. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Uh, he had such, that on your fridge. <laughs> I need he to had such that. an iconic hat. You know, you can, if you get the hat right, the rest of it doesn't matter much. <laughs> but, well, yes, thank you. It was a lovely, inspiring session. Oh, good. Very cool. Thank so you. I know Jess has to run because it's eight, but we're I'm going to stay uh, uh, till everybody who has their hands raised gets to share. Because I'm usually I'm usually the guy who's ready to share, and then somebody says we're out of time, and I, uh, I don't want anybody to be that guy. And I didn't want to be that guy either. So like I'll probably do like a quiet fade away, and I'm really tempted right. to stay longer. <laughs> well, just in case. Thanks so much, Jess. This is pretty well. Yeah, yeah. If I don't get to say goodbye, it was really lovely to be here with y'all. And I see Laura Silverman. Hi, Laura. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. So I recently read an uh, interview with Celeste Headley and it was about how we can cancel hustle culture and create a new sustainable work paradigm. 
Wow. And she talks about how she was an opera singer and then a journalist and she had a viral TED talk and now is a book author. And um, she's really interesting to, to read about. I think she has a new book coming out. Um, that's how far I got. That's awesome. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. How about somebody named Mishka? <laughs> Hi, um, can I share a screen? Uh-huh. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Here it is. Um, I didn't use a real interview. I used notes from talking to my brother. Wow. Um, so, sorry, I can read it here. Um, so I missed a bunch of his calls and they come at random times. And if I see two or two, I always pick up, even if I'm in conversation with someone else. Oh, this was have to, supposed to have like a little diagonal line. Um, this calls from a federal prison. You will not be charged for this call. And then he's like, I, I got worried about you when you didn't answer. Had you left the country? And then he tells me stories like this. This guy told me his hearing aids don't work, but I found it. He was lying to me. He just didn't want to hear my stories. Can you look up some stuff online for me? Like this new medication that I got from my doc. Is it safe for me long term? Because I can't use Google at, in prison. Um, also, how did Brittany Murphy die? And then I said, who? And he's like, oh, wait, no, you totally know her. She was so hot. She was in Girl Interrupted, just married. He mentioned like 10 movies that I didn't ever hear of or see. <laughs> how can you not know her? But I looked her up. Um, anyway, and then about uh, New Year's Eve, I, I asked him if he stayed up till midnight. He's like, no, I fell asleep at 1030. And this place is so unusual. Nobody woke us up at midnight. You could hear a mouse fart. And then I got great news. I got into the rebound program. I'll be a junior in college when I get out. Oh, and I'm able to run a mile now with my new meds and everything because, oh, wait, we're almost out of time. So thanks for calling in. I look. Wow. Started. Amazing. Beautiful. That's so good. Thanks for sharing. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I just read your book. I was inspired by it. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Thanks for reading it. Ray and Luna, you need to be on camera um, to share. So I'm going to, oh, Ray's coming online. There you are. Hey, Ray. Hey, everyone. Um, didn't quite finish, but I think I got close enough. Um, I actually chose a, a trailer for a documentary that I watched recently called All That Breeds, uh, which is about a, a set of three brothers in India that run a bird hospital. Um, so there's been a lot of like issues with like climate change and and, um, you know, how that's affecting like the bird's habitat, how that's affecting life in the city and everything. And so the movie is really about how essential these birds are to the overall ecosystem of the city, um, you know, in terms of like how they interact with like trash and create new tools out of it, things like that. So um, I just took the text straight from the uh, trailer and um, so as best as possible here. Um, so we got like a snail, some garbage. There's a lot of close-ups on like animals in their, you know, kind of city environment. Um, we've got a picture of a kite here, which is the bird type. And um, one of the brothers says, when we got our first kite, I'd stay up at night staring at it. It looked like a furious reptile from another planet. Um, we've got another panel here of one of the brothers and a kite. And he says, it took my glasses. <laughs> Um, next panel, we've got two of the brothers together and then a cage. I haven't quite finished that yet, but um, one of them says, Saud, if we play dead inside the cage, will the kites try to eat us? And then Saud responds, go try lying down. Um, and then here, this is kind of the end of the trailer. So we've got a long shot and uh, just narration from one of the brothers. It says, life itself is kinship. We are all a community of air. And then the very last wow. quote here with some little pre Creepy crawlies, it says one should not differentiate between all that breeds. Wow. Yeah, so I would really like to sit down and do this like a, you know, like less, uh, <laughs> less sketchy, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> I bet you're not the only one. <laughs> this is very I, mean, I should call it like bank robbery comics. You have five minutes to be, draw this comic. <laughs> Actually, Thanks very good exercise for me. I have a hard time. I get, I get stuck sometimes because I'm trying to draw too perfect, so. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. I love the bridge across the page. You got lots of love in the chat. So check it out. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Luna, can you come on camera so 
we can look at what you did. Was, did Luna share already? Or was it a different Luna? I think it's a different person. Share? All right, we'll jump to Chris. Chris. Um, yeah, that was challenging in lots of different ways. Um, I chose a quote from, I mean, an interview with Anais Nin. Anais Nin, she's a famous diarist and novelist between the 20s and around 1970 or 1980. Um, and um, she's saying, I would like to see women become articulate. And so I drew some women who didn't have mouths. Um, and then I drew them with, with mouths and creating their own language so they can talk to men. And I tried to draw some men who didn't have eyes <laughs> um, <laughs> and make them see. And then wow. the men have eyes. <laughs> wow, that's so cool, Chris. <laughs> Very fast. That's amazing. Y'all really distilled it. I like that a lot of people latched on to quotes. They're just a little bit of a thing. I like that's wonderful. It's so smart yeah. and brilliant. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks for sharing, Chris. Uh, Luna's still off camera, so we'll go to Midi. Hi. Hi, I already went. You did? Then yeah. Zoom's lying to me. Yeah, I see. <laughs> We're starting to. All right. How about Cheryl C? There we are. All right. Um, I did I have these um, things I've saved from people about their flashbulb memories, um, like what they remember. Um, so this is, I have two Polish friends. One says there were big events like Chernobyl, the Polish president dying in a plane crash in Russia. But in the end, both of their memories are of 9-11. He remembers sharing an elevator with a woman at work. She said, did you hear? The other friend remembers watching Chocolat with her mother, hitting pause to get something in the kitchen and seeing the news. Then in the evening, they had a dance at the university where she wore a dark green satin skirt that her friend had made. Wow. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, Marlena. <laughs> I'm here. Hello. Good good morning in Sydney, but good evening over there. <laughs> well, um, my um, contribution, Jess, is a bit different because I'm using my imagination from a visit to the hospital yesterday. And so um, I had some problems with my um, device here this morning and uh, when I got back I just started to um, create uh, an interview that a man might have who is gravely ill with angina. Angina is um, a disease that affects your heart and uh, he, he has been battling with it and saying on his mobile phone I am so exhausted, I'm so worried. Droplets coming from his face for the surgery that awaits me. And so um, that is the, the orientation of my, my interview. And so the next part is uh, where he's lying on the bed with all the devices around him, screens, mm. and cords and so on. And he's petrified because the, the surgeon is not quite, um, uh, you know, capable of doing the, um, the, the, the surgery. He's, he's a little bit older, but he's committed to helping this poor bloke out. And then the complication of the, the story is he's got his scalpel and uh, he's got his, um, his uh, make-believe torch looking for the cent central part of the body where the heart might be. And he continues to operate on him. And then I got as far as this part where he actually ripped his heart out <laughs> put <in> a, <laughs> and put in a new one. And the guy is um, under anesthetic, oh, uh, blissfully unaware of what's been happening. So he tosses the heart into a bin and he put in a, a brand new heart into the poor guy. And that's as far as I got. 
Wow, amazing. <laughs> way, way further than I got. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> So Thank we've got you. Eve, Gio, and Olivia, and then I, I think we're uh, we're good to go. Hi, Eve. Hi, how are you? Um, so I found a um, a bird nut, and he uh, here he is being born. He says I was a nature nut out of the womb, and um, the first thing that he saw was, I can't read this backwards. Um, <laughs> the sky was full of migrating raptors and that just caught him on birds. And then he just talks about birds. And so like here is in China, probably 65% of the yellow sea mudflats have been quote unquote reclaimed. And so basically they build a wall and they either pave or put you know buildings on the other side of the wall instead of the natural area. And so a lot of the birds are dying out. And um then here he's talking about migratory birds and they use unihemispheric uni, uni sleep, um, which means that half of their brain is awake and the other half is asleep. And they just, as they migrate, they just do, they go switch brain halves all the time. And that's how they sleep when they're migrating. And um, they're like 40,000 feet high, some birds. And so um, birds have air sacs throughout their body and um, more efficient hemoglobin. And so that lets them breathe. So that's what I get. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, Geo's, uh, we need you on camera. There we go. Hello. Hey there. Um, I also did a bird one. <laughs> the closest book I had was a birding book. Um, and it names, it's like, there's all these species. Wow. Um, then it's like, uh, it's really hard if you're starting out birding to figure it out and then the like no one person has seen all the species and then the last one is it's hard to find some species and that was my comic <laughs> wow <laughs> thank you all that's a lot for the time we had that's amazing so we've got olivia and then and then jamie's going to send us out per tradition Hi, Olivia. Hi. Um, so the interview I chose was a gentleman's quarterly interview with actor Robert Pattinson. Um, and this interview is from lockdown. And the actor is like notoriously kind of a weird guy. Um, so there are some weird things that happen throughout the interview. Yes, the pasta interview. <laughs> so he's trying to show this idea he has for um, like a pasta sort of a calzone idea. He's like, yeah, so I'm just gonna cook this um, in the oven with, and it's wrapped in foil. Um, and the interviewer is like, I think that is a microwave. And he's like, no, it's an oven, it's fine. Um, so my comic is him putting it in the microwave. I mean, sorry, the wow. oven. Um, and he's like, yeah, this is gonna be great. Puts it in um, for 10 minutes turns away, at which point it explodes because it is a microwave and he put foil in it. Um, and that is the comic. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> wow. Strange, but true. In, in five hours? That took you five hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was drawing down to the last second and I still am missing a speech bubble. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. it looks beautiful. All right, Jamie, take us out. Okay, hold on, I'm ready. I, I'm used to being Tom, but it's so nice that it's you. Hold on, here we go. I didn't get a chance to do much, but okay, I thought immediately interview. It's gotta be Andy Warhol, right? But so there's him, and I was like, well, all these things are from like chunks of interviews. So I did like, they did like a wigged out anniversary when he had Marilyn's wig on. He was just like, whatever. And then he wrote, Oh, I never read. I just look at pictures and I'm like, yeah, me too. That's why I don't even know what Antifa is. Okay. Anyway, then in the future, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes, which as we know is happening right now. So the guy was totally prophetic, like Jim Morrison predicting cell phones too much. Anyway, over here, uh, a picture means, oh, a picture means I know where I was every minute. It's a visual diary. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, the Campbell's soup. I got to finish that. Then that was like, I found a picture of him signing somebody's butt. Doesn't really have anything <laughs> to do with anything. But then Marilyn, I thought, oh, look, Marilyn, what if her mole was like a zit, right? So I found a quote that said, when I did my self-portrait, I left all the pimples out because you always should. 
pimples are a temporary condition and they don't have anything to do with what you really look like. So always, like, oh, always omit the blemishes. And I thought, well, that's words to live by. And that's my comic. Thank you. This was really great Beautiful. fun. Uh, try to finish it later. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for sharing. Hey, can everybody come off mute and let's give Jess a big round of applause. She stayed late. Mm -hmm. oh, thank, you. thank you so much, thank you. Jess. Thank you. This was amazing. Oh, this was oh, great God. evening. Thank you. Please yeah, keep sharing it with us. Oh, oh, and I don't leave yet. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot thank to you, tell thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, if you, I don't want to hold you hostage, but I forgot to tell you that uh, it's, I mentioned it on the call earlier. But there is a nonfiction anthology. Y'all should all now now and and the deadline to submit just a pitch not the final is march 15th which is five days so just like uh draw some eyelashes on the drawings you did tonight and send those in and tom will be like what is all of this we'd be so <laughs> delighted to have any of these in the anthology because they're all nonfiction. great job yeah and look what you did in 20 minutes you have all the way yeah. from march 15th you could you know make a a 50 page uh, uh <laughs> all on coming, everybody. And highlighters <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Keep making comics. Keep coming back on Friday nights. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Have you. a great weekend. Thank you, Jen. Bye. Thank you, Michael.